Hello my friends, welcome to Lean and Clean with Fitness Chef Christine. I am Christine, your host, and the goal of today is to help you add more vegetables to your life. So the first thing that we're gonna do is make a skinny pasta. Skinny pasta is a plant-based pasta, so it doesn't have any carbs. Not that I'm afraid of carbs, as you'll see with the second recipe, but it is always good to have some options. So on here, I have some cherry tomatoes, one cut onion, some fresh rosemary, some fresh basil, one yellow squash. You can use zucchini, you can use what you have. The idea is that we're gonna roast all of this and make a delicious sauce. I also have two slices of Parmigiano Reggiano on there. Now you can use the rind, it's mostly for flavor. So I always keep the rind in my refrigerator in this waxy paper. So we just simply put it on there. Now we're gonna add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. So we're just gonna coat that real nicely. I'm gonna add one teaspoon of chopped olives. So this is just Katamala olives chopped. You can leave it out if you don't like it, but I find it gives it a great complexity of flavor. We're always trying to add flavors. So when this is pureed, it's gonna look just like a regular tomato sauce, but it's gonna have a lot more flavor and a lot more vegetables packed in there. You can use chopped carrots, you can use celery, be creative, you can use chopped cauliflower, it'll make it a little more creamy, and we'll give it a little bit more of a, a little bit harder on your stomach, is a nice way to say it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead, we've got our salt, we've got our pepper, we've got, actually I'm gonna add just a little more pepper on there, and on this one I'm gonna use a little bit of white pepper. Here we go. I have a little lazy Susan of spices, so we're gonna shake it all up, get it nice and coated. And right before I, after I roast it, right before I puree it, I'll add some more fresh basil so we get that nice basil flavor. So it's going into a 400 degree oven until those tomatoes are nice and blistered and have released their juices and the squash is soft, and as are the onions. So we'll puree all that and you'll get a nice smooth sauce. Now, the second thing we're going to make is a vegetable lasagna. But the trick of this is that you're gonna puree your vegetables. So they're gonna melt in with that cheese. You're not really gonna be the, the star of the show, just gonna have that nice background flavor knowing that you got all those veggies in. So let me prep that and then we'll get to it. While our pasta sauce is baking, we are going to start on the filling for our lasagna. Originally I was going to do stuffed shells, but I couldn't even find the large shells in the grocery store. So I got some new baked lasagna noodles and that's what we're gonna use. So for the filling, we're gonna make this super easy. We're gonna put it all in the food processor. So we're gonna put in here our ricotta cheese. I'm using a whole milk ricotta cheese. We need 15 ounces, which is half of a container. And a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. And we need a quarter cup of mozzarella. I'm using the shredded mozzarella. And this is one, two cups of frozen and drained. You can see all the spinach water I've drained out of it. So it's frozen, defrosted, and drained spinach and then we're going to use some fresh basil so we're just going to tear that into there and then i pre-cooked some sausage so we're going to use about a cup of italian sausage i bought it in bulk and i'll use it in two different recipes so this is one of them if you are not a sausage lover feel free to leave it out or you could use cooked chicken or any other filling any other desired protein that you like we're also going to add a little bit of zucchini in there because again, the goal is to add as much to this as we possibly can. So, we've got some nice washed zucchini. I'm just going to chunk it up. We're going to use a whole zucchini. One of the great things about that is that it adds volume with very little calories. Now. Can't forget our salt and pepper, so we're gonna give it a good zhuzh of salt and pepper. And then we're gonna cover it up and blend it. So I'm going to spare your ears while I blend it because it's very loud. Once we have everything blended in and it's all chunk free, now we're gonna add our egg. I've gone ahead and tasted the filling. So I just took a little scoop, put a little bit in your hand, give it a taste. Make sure that your seasoning is on point. Because once you put the raw egg in, you really don't want to taste it. All right, 
go ahead and crack our egg in a separate bowl, making sure that we have no shells. Now, if you have a lot of filling, you might want to use two eggs, which I'm going to do because it also helps up the protein. All right, so let's go ahead and put those eggs in there. And we'll get, that, we'll get the corn nice and blended up. Now, this will just take a second to just so hopefully it won't blow your ears off. Sometimes this thing is a little fuzzy. All right, maybe not. He loves. Here it is, all blended up. So let's review real fast. We've got our ricotta cheese in there. We've got our Parmesan cheese, a little bit of mozzarella cheese. We have our spinach and we have our zucchini in there and then salt and pepper. And now we're good to go. Okay, I am using these no boil lasagna noodles. I love these, especially on a weekday where you don't have a lot of time to assemble your food. These work out great. Originally, like I said, I was gonna do stuffed shells, but since they're not available, we have to go with what we can get. Such is life. Okay, let me get a spoon. Oh Lord, dropping everything. Let's use this one. Okay, we're just gonna add a little bit of sauce on the bottom. And I am using a store-bought sauce, but I, one I really like, it is Michael's of Brooklyn. Make sure that you get something that is a good high quality. So I'm just spreading a little bit of the sauce on the bottom there. I'm gonna take our no-bake noodle. Do not worry if it does not cover the entire thing, you can actually add, overlap them, and that is perfectly fine. We're gonna add a good amount of our filling in there. Just dot it around. You want it quite full. It will compact as it cooks. And the little bit of liquid that's gonna be leached out from the zucchini will help the noodles do their thing, so don't worry about having to squeeze all that out. We're gonna add a little bit more mozzarella, and when I say a little bit, just one little tiny slice. I'm just gonna dot that around. And I don't like to use pre-shredded cheeses because they're coated in starches that I really don't wanna add. So the, to the extent that you can shred it yourself or slice it yourself, you're much better off. Okay, let's add a little more sauce. So right to the center, and then we'll spread it out. And I just use the same spoon so that I don't have to do more dishes. All right, and then we're gonna add more filling. And honest to God, I could eat this filling just by itself. It's so good. And spread it out, spread it out. If you find that you've missed a chunk of zucchini, like that one, just set it aside, it's no big deal. You can cook it separately. And you'll notice that I'm using a loaf pan. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm not trying to serve a lot of people and I like it thick. So this keeps it nice and thick without being too much. And a little more sauce. Now you could add mozzarella to every layer, but I don't need to have that much on there. We have some in our filling. And the last of the filling. And if you have some filling left over, that's cool. You can use it any which way. You can bake it off and you can use it in sandwiches. There's a whole bunch of ways you can use it. You can use it with other pastas. But we should have the perfect amount. more. We're going to top it with another small bit of mozzarella. And pasta noodles. And the rest of that sauce. So we'll go heavy on the sauce on that one. That'll cook down nicely. Little dot here and there. And then it's going to go into the oven. Now, because everything is already cooked, it really just needs to warm up and get nice and bubbly. So, about 30 35 minutes should do it. Piece here. And then I'll bring it out and I'll show you what it looks like. All right. Our 
and veggies are done and they're ready to become sauce. Now here you have a few options. So usually what I do is I just goop them right into here with the herbs and all, and then I'll just puree it up. If you like it a little more creamy, you can add a touch of heavy cream or a little bit of Greek yogurt if you want a little tanginess to it. But for me, this is just perfect. So we already had some olive oil on there, so we don't need to add any more. I'm just gonna continue this. Now remember, this is really hot. I always cover my blender with a towel whenever I'm doing something hot, so that if it splatters, I don't get burned. That is a good thing to do. Take a few more seconds here and scoop the rest of this in here. All right, everybody in. It helps if you talk to it, you know? That's what I do. Get in there. So those two slices of Parmesan that I put in there have melted away while this rind rem you know, remains, and that's fine. I'm not gonna puree the rind, I just did that for extra flavor. So we're gonna go ahead and puree that. Cover. I washed it in between recipes, so there we go. A little pulse. And that's all we're looking for. It's okay if it remains a bit chunky. I like that. Over here, I have our skinny pasta. All that you need to do is take it out, open up the pouch, rinse it with some water. I like to rinse it with some boiling hot water just so that it gets all that starchiness that might be in there out. It is made with yams, so it does have a little bit of starchy flavor if you don't rinse it. But I, go, I did go ahead and rinse it, so we're good there. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in our bowl. I did tear up a little few basil leaves and toss it with that basil. I'm gonna touch it with just a tiny bit more olive oil just to keep it separated as we go ahead and plate it up. We're gonna give this a little taste test, make sure that our seasoning is on point before we put it on there. Let's take this out. Put that on our pan. Let's make sure we're happy with this flavor. See how nice and beautiful that is? Ooh, yeah, that's good. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put just some of that sauce. There's probably more than I need on here, but you know, I like it. I like it pretty saucy. Now, because the noodles have basically no calories, I think it says it has 4.5 calories, so hardly anything in there. So we have a little room for a little extra cheese. I put the Parmesan cheese over here. Oh, so we're just gonna hit with a little bit of that parm. And then I'll give it a little taste test there. Fork, I have the proper equipment to taste it with. All right, let me give it a little taste for you. We're waiting for that lasagna to bake up. Now I'll always give my honest opinion, even on my own food. Hmm. It's good, but it can use a little salt. I tend to go light in the salt in the beginning and then you can always adjust it. And if I'm adding cheese, I wanna make sure that it's not overly salty. Although to be honest with you, after working with food for years and years, my salt palate is probably, I probably require more salt than most people because I'm so used to salting everything. That is a fact of working in hospitality industry. You just you salt and salt as you go. Give me a little problem here for getting on my fork. Mm. You do get that lovely little bit of olive to it. And I cannot taste the, the a yellow squash at all. So if you have somebody that is, as you're trying to feed more vegetables too and they like pasta, this is a great way to go. Cause you can eat this whole entire bowl and you're getting a lot of servings of vegetables. I hope that you'll try it and you'll let me know what you think. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you what that lasagna looks like. I want it to bake first and then cool down so we get a nice slice of it. So I will be back. Look at how yummy this is. It is so good. I had to have a little bite. I really hope that you make this. Listen, if you're not into spinach and you're not into zucchini or anything else, you can make it with mushrooms, make it your own. It's the exact same process. So there's no reason not to try it. Get those veggies in any way you can. 
Mm. It really is delicious. You can make it as lasagna, or you can make it as stuffed shells, you can make it with skinny pasta and use the same methodology, but I want you to try it. So if you've liked this episode, I hope that you will give us a, a thumbs up or five stars or wherever you're listening to this. If you're listening to it on podcast, if you're listening to it on YouTube, I'm all over the place. So I'm here to help. If you have questions, let me know. You can always email me. And if nothing else, I hope that you take away the love of vegetables today. So make sure that you subscribe because it's free. Sending you lots of love and prayers.